Who is the international man of mischief? He started as a kid tycoon, a milkshake tycoon, even before he was legally an adult. Meet Peter Clarence Foster. Born in 1962, this Australian native was already making waves in the marketing and sales world by the tender age of 19. His ventures were as bold as they were varied. Picture a young Foster, barely old enough to legally step foot in a discotheque, promoting themed nights at a Gold Coast hotspot. His entrepreneurial spirit didn't stop at the dance floor. At 17, he threw his hat into the ring as a boxing promoter. His audacious ventures soon caught the attention of more than just prospective clients. Foster's first brush with the law came shortly after his 20th birthday. He was met with fines after making a fraudulent insurance claim. The boxing match he'd been promoting fell through, and Foster, it seems, was not one to take a financial hit lying down. But this was just a taste of what was to come. Foster's ambitions were not confined to the disco and boxing scenes. Soon, the bright lights of television production would catch his eye. He would go on to produce a documentary with none other than Muhammad Ali while residing in Los Angeles. But as we'll soon discover, Foster's financial dealings were often as punchy as the boxing legend he was filming. One thing is clear, Foster was never one to shy away from a challenge or an opportunity. His ventures were bold, ambitious, and often on the edge of legality. His early escapades earned him nicknames like Kid Tycoon and Milkshake Tycoon. But these monikers, while colorful, barely scratched the surface of the complex figure Foster would become. As we delve deeper into Foster's story, we'll see a man who is as comfortable in a boxing ring as he is in a courtroom, as adept at selling products as he is at evading the law. Buckle up, because we're just getting started. But that was only the beginning of Foster's dance with the law. From Australia to Hollywood, Foster's ambitions knew no bounds. With dreams bigger than the outback, our man of mischief found himself in the glamorous world of Los Angeles. As he navigated the labyrinth of Tinseltown, Foster ventured into an industry that was as dazzling as it was unpredictable. Television production. His aspirations led him to rub shoulders with the legendary Muhammad Ali. Together, they embarked on the creation of a documentary, a project that promised potential and prestige. But as with any tale of ambition, there were bumps along the road. A significant setback for Foster was a boxing bout featuring Ali, set to take place down under. The fight, hyped and highly anticipated, ended up being nothing more than a mirage in the desert. The bout never materialized, leaving Foster with a hefty financial loss and a bruised reputation. Simultaneously, Foster was marketing a method for quitting smoking. His scheme, like a Hollywood blockbuster, was full of promise, but lacked substance. The method, much like the ill-fated boxing bout, failed to deliver on its grand promises. The combination of these failed ventures pushed Foster into a corner. The man once known as the Kid Tycoon was now grappling with the harsh reality of bankruptcy. His dreams of Hollywood success were overshadowed by the looming specter of financial ruin. Yet, Foster's story was far from over. The Australian who had once danced with the stars in Hollywood now faced the daunting task of rebuilding his empire from the ashes. His tale is a stark reminder of how the pursuit of ambition, unchecked and unguided, can lead to a precipice. But the bright lights of Hollywood couldn't keep Foster's ventures afloat. The glitz and glamour of Tinseltown proved to be a treacherous path for Foster. His Hollywood chapter ended not with a standing ovation, but with the harsh sound of a gavel and the cold reality of bankruptcy. But as we'll soon discover, Foster's story was far from over. This was merely the end of one act, with plenty more twists and turns to come in this tale of an international man of mischief. Enter the ancient Chinese diet secret by Lin Ti. Peter Foster, ever the entrepreneur, saw an opportunity to tap into the weight loss market with this product, marketing it as the key to shedding pounds without the sweat and tears. The promise was enticing. Drink this tea and watch the weight melt away. Foster's company, pushing this miracle tea, soon found itself in hot water. It wasn't long before the Australian Competition and AMP Consumer Commission started sniffing around, their interest piqued by the too-good-to-be-true claims revolving around Bai Lin Tea. And as they delved deeper, things started to unravel. Foster's company was bankrupted, its foundation of false promises unable to support the weight of scrutiny. 
But our international man of mischief was not deterred. Like a true chameleon, he adapted and moved his operations to fresher pastures, the United Kingdom, and later the United States. However, the law has a long arm, and it wasn't long before Foster was in its grasp again. This time, the charge was grand theft, a serious accusation stemming from the fraudulent claims he made about Bai Lin Ti. Convicted, he found himself staring at the cold, hard walls of a prison cell. Foster's audacious marketing of Bai Lin Ti as a weight loss solution had spiraled into a series of legal troubles. The tea, once painted as a miraculous solution to weight problems, became a symbol of his fraudulent practices. But this saga, as tumultuous as it was, was just another chapter in Foster's colorful and controversial career. One might think that such a setback would dampen his spirits, perhaps even prompt a change of course. But if there's one thing we've learned about Peter Foster, it's that he's not easily dissuaded. Bankruptcy, investigations, convictions, these were but hurdles in his path, challenges to overcome. But the international man of mischief was far from done. He'd proven time and time again that he was a man of many hats, always ready to shift gears and venture into new territories. And as we'll see, his next move would take him into even murkier waters. Foster's return to England was anything but triumphant. His previous escapades with the Bailin tea scam had left a bitter taste in the mouth of the authorities. The fines he faced were substantial, a steep price for peddling false dreams of weight loss. But Foster, ever the chameleon, slipped into a new guise. This time, he found himself peddling slimming granules under false pretenses. The promise of a quick fix to weight issues proved to be an irresistible lure for many. However, the law was not so easily beguiled. By 1996, the weight of his deceit had caught up with him, and he found himself confined within the cold, unforgiving walls of a prison cell. Freedom, though, proved to be a siren call he couldn't ignore. While on day release, Foster absconded, slipping through the fingers of the law once again. Armed with a false passport, he returned to the sun-soaked shores of Australia. Back on home turf, Foster slipped back into his old habits. This time, he found himself in the crosshairs of the law for fraudulently marketing biometrics, a thigh contour treatment. The promise of a perfect body, achieved without sweat or sacrifice, proved to be a tantalizing prospect for many. However, the authorities were not so easily swayed. The charges brought against him were severe, resulting in fines and further time behind bars. Yet in this dance with the law, Foster was not always on the defensive. There were moments when he switched sides, playing a game of double jeopardy. His complex relationship with the law took a surprising turn, with Foster undertaking undercover work for the Australian Federal Police. Donning a new role, he found himself ensnared in the murky world of drug trafficking investigations. But that's a story for another time. Yet amid his criminal endeavors, Foster also played a surprising role. Our tale of this international man of mischief continues. Foster, the criminal, also became Foster, the undercover agent. An unexpected twist to an already convoluted tale, isn't it? But that's exactly what happened. In the early 90s, Foster found himself donning a new hat, that of an undercover agent for the Australian Federal Police. This surprising turn of events was driven by a deeply personal cause, his sister's battle with drug addiction. Foster took on a role that many would shy away from. He participated in drug trafficking investigations, going undercover to gather vital information. He didn't just dip his toes into this dangerous world, he dove headfirst into it. Foster wore listening devices during meetings with known criminals, risking his safety to expose their illicit operations. It was a tightrope walk between the law and the underworld, showcasing a complex relationship with legality that defies easy categorization. But Foster's ventures weren't limited to the shadowy world of crime and law enforcement. He also dabbled in political affairs, a move as audacious as it was unexpected. Following the Fijian coup d'etat in 2001, Foster invested over a million Fijian dollars in the new Labour Unity Party. He wasn't content with just financially backing the party, though. Foster stepped into the role of campaign director for Tupini Baba, the former deputy prime minister. In his characteristic style, Foster painted himself as a freedom fighter for Fiji. He voiced concerns about the political stability of the country 
presenting himself as a champion of democracy. It was a bold move, one that further complicated the perception of this enigmatic figure. And so, the international man of mischief continues his dance on the edge of legality, ever elusive and ever intriguing. Whether as an undercover agent, a political campaigner, or a con artist, Peter Foster remains a figure of fascination, a man whose ambitions seem to know no bounds. His story serves as a reminder that life can be as unpredictable as it is complex, and that the line between legality and criminality can sometimes blur in the most unexpected ways.